heard of the Nobel Peace Prize. And you might even be able to name some of the people that have received the Peace Prize throughout the years. It is a very, you know, prestigious award to be able to have that you are recognized as an individual who has been working to bring peace into a world that is not full of peace at all. And sometimes people want that prize just for the prestige. Not necessarily that they've done anything to earn or deserve it, they just want to have that, put it on their resume and say how important they are. I got the peace prize. And others are so humble and deserving that when they win that prize, for them it's it's, it's something that they would have done if there wasn't a prize. They want to do good. They want to help out. And the Peace Prize, the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize, has a very you know, strange twist and turn of events to it in the way that it came about. Alfred Nobel, I believe he was Swedish. He was a chemist. He was a uh, good scientist, and he worked around with chemicals, and he came up with one of the words that we have in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. He came up with something that he named dynamite. And amazingly, he took that word from the Greek, and the Greek that is here in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 is power. And the Greek word was Dynamis, dynamite. The gospel is the power. It is the dynamite power that changes hearts. It is the power that fights against sin, death, and the devil. And it is a power that is so strong when it is used with the word and the spirit that you and I have experienced its benefits. God's washed away our sins. God's forgiven our sins. God has made us a member of his family. God has does, done something for us as Christians and believers that sometimes people have said, you know, I'm not going to be a believer until hell freezes over. Well, God's got that kind of power. And with the word and through the sacraments, God uses the power of this word to bring about positive changes in the lives of human beings. Dynamite itself has the power to bring about destructive changes. I mean, it's meant to blow things up. And it's been strengthened and amplified and brought out to the point where it is so destructive and dangerous that Nobel realized, what have I introduced to the world? And so he wanted to do what he could to try to change his reputation the inventor of this powerful explosive, wanted to be known in a better light. And so he came up with the Nobel Peace Prize and the monetary gifts that come along with that Peace Prize. And from his uh, earnings, from all of the money that he made, he used a big portion of that to continue to fund the Nobel Peace Prize. So, we know him connected with peace, but he's also connected to dynamite, the destructive force. God is a God of peace, and he wants us to have peace. And we end our worship services by being reassured that God's peace is upon us, and that it will always be with us. And that's the power that God wants us to hold on to and he wants us to share it, share that message, so that other hearts can have those outer coverings of stone blasted away so that the Spirit can get through with the gospel and that God's message of salvation can get through to comfort 
to reassure, to give hope and joy to as many people as possible before the day of judgment comes and the Lord himself will come back, come back again. And as we heard in our gospel lessons, he comes back for a judgment on one hand of destruction and on the other hand of everlasting light in the mansions of glory. We want to be on God's own. And be very careful because your right and my right are different. We want to be on God's good side, not on his bad side. And we need God's message of salvation. And we need the message of the cross to get it across very loudly and clearly. All of the kids that attend, attended our vacation Bible school received their very own Bible. And we would normally do that in confirmation with the Concordia Self-Study Bible, but we cannot get them anymore. So all of our confirmation students that are coming forward uh, for the classes this year who don't have any Concordia Self-Study Bible already will be getting a brand new New International Bible, and they got those Bibles, they made coverings, book coverings for those Bibles, they decorated them, and for some it was their very first Bible ever. And their goal was, you know, hopefully by Sunday they have it read. Uh, good for them. I mean, praise the Lord that that's what they're thinking and realizing that the stories that they heard, the message that they heard, was so important that they want to read it all. And that should be a goal for every one of us every year, to read the Bible, to make sure that we are connected with God's Word on a regular basis. And in confirmation classes, we'll be having that opportunity because we use them in every class. And they've got their own Bible. And they can write their own notes on it. And they can get it more closely acquainted with God's word and his message of love and salvation. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding in your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue now with the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the offering. We do have the offering that is in the entryway, and many of you might have left it there, but there are others like myself but still have it, so hold them high and we'll come get Observer, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You 
you have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick. Cheer those who are sad. Call those who are distressed. And comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessings to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petition. We bring these petitions before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you, that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn. Our next hymn is Fight for the Fight in the hymnal for our worshipers at home in 457 verses 1, 2, and 3.
brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Our closing hymn is God Beats in a Mysterious Way, verses 1, 2, and 3, hymn number 420. Thank you. 